Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. I'm guessing most of you are familiar with the old phrase, out of sight, out of mind. And you know, there are times when a person has been in your life for whatever reason and they're no longer coming around and you kind of forget to talk about them or think about them. They just don't cross your mind much. That's not necessarily the case though, when you may be out of sight from a person with strong narcissistic tendencies, but they're still in your mind. And I've had so many stories with people indicating that they have moved away from a narcissistic person or way cut back on their contact with that individual, but it's like their influence continues to linger in their own lives. The way I put it is, it's like you still have a ghost inside your home and they're creating all sorts of haunting memories and things like that. And so there are times when a person has to come to terms with many questions that go along with that notion that says, what do I do, even if I can successfully remove myself physically from this person, what do I do with all the haunting memories and that ghost kind of feel like that person still in, in my presence, if you will. Now, I've, I've jot, jotted down several illustrations of what I'm talking about, and these are testimonials from individuals, and I, I want you to hear them carefully because I suspect you'll be able to relate to some of them. You'll probably have some of your own, but let, let, let's take a look at what we're referring to. One person says, I divorced 20 years ago and had a great relationship with my daughter. Over the years, her mother was very dominant and fed her so many lies that I lost my insider's position with my daughter on the rare occasions when I see her it's like she's turned into her mother. Another person says, my son-in-law was with us over the holiday season and he was beyond critical the whole time. Now that he's gone, my wife and I have been arguing over what he said and what he meant and that's very unusual for us. His presence is poison and it takes time to detox once he's gone. Another individual indicates I had a business partner who was like a brother to me but my business collapsed when he defaulted on major loans, left the country, and I had to face the IRS. It's been years and I still have not completely crawled out of the hole. My family has faced many, many changes because of that. Another person says, my ex-husband was prominent in our community, but we divorced because he was a chronic womanizer and at home he was a rageaholic. Now that we're divorced, he gives my son, my adult son, lots of money and is turning him into a mini version of himself. My son treats women just like his dad did, like chattel, to be used for his own immediate gratification. Another person says, my sister was the quiet one in our family growing up, and she holds lots of grudges due to being the family scapegoat. Now she has three kids of her own and has taught them to have nothing to do with our parents. Our family is splintered. I feel like I'm the one who's paying the price for my parents, in quotes, especially my mother's abuse toward her as a girl. And you can see that we're, what we're talking about, there's that ghost in the room. The narcissist, their memory and their influence continues to linger. And, and if you've had an experience like that, it leaves you with multiple questions that you have to come to terms with. And I'd like to go through some of those questions and see if we can take a look at what that might mean. For example, you might ask uh, regarding that ghost uh, who's now gone but not really, how can one person be so cruel that they don't ponder the impact of their choices on other individuals? And you know that narcissists can do all sorts of things that are all about me, me, and then a little bit more me. And in doing so, they make your life a wreck. Built into the equation of what narcissism is, is the attitude of entitlement, lots of manipulation, lots of falsehood and lies. It's what they are. Narcissists have no future thinking. And you're over there thinking, well, let's, let's figure out where all of this is going. 
It's like, nah, right now all I care about is me. And it's, it's so important for you to recognize that's the person you are dealing with, whether you agree with it or not, there they are. And that becomes part of your truth now as you try to figure out what, how to move forward. Or another strong question that people have with that ghost in the room is, well, how do I manage the many emotions that I feel on the inside of myself? And those emotions can be anxiety or anger or distrust or loneliness or resentment. First, we're going to say that your emotions are quite natural. You shouldn't shame yourself, that's for sure, for having the emotion because it's very real and they're there to register whatever it is they're trying to communicate. You're basically saying, you know, things were very, very wrong and that's why I feel as I do. What you'll need to do there, well, let's just say a mistake that you want to avoid is to think if I could get that person to see the light, if I could get that person to make some adjustments, it won't happen. Instead, what you'll have to do is you'll have to individualize your efforts. I have a lot of emotion, and regardless of what that person does or does not do, how, how uh, sorry they are or not sorry they are, I've got to come to terms. What is my philosophy of managing my anger? What am I going to do with that resentment? And, and how do I deal with my loneliness? And, and you'll have to take your own initiative and unhook from that person, knowing that there's a strong individual on the inside of you, and we can tap into that, but we're going to need to figure out how to make that happen. It's on you to be your own um, uh, arbitrator of who you're going to be. <coughs> Excuse me. Another question that you can have in the, in the aftermath of all of this is, how do I know in life what's real? In other words, uh, can I trust people again? I used to think that there was some, some good reason for me to engage with this person, but now that reason's gone. And again, I'm going to say we got to go back and, and individualize. By the way, there are some individuals out there who are decent individuals, um, but I'm going to need to ask, you know, do I have enough common sense that guides me? Do I pick up on red flags that people uh, uh, throw in front of me? Am I the kind of person that can trust myself and trust my judgment? And you can see, obviously, that this might have a need or require a need for you to uh, to seek out uh, therapy or uh, accountability with friends that you trust who can um, kind of give you some monitoring with something like that. Another question is, how do I get rid of this person's stench? Uh, as, as you're going in the aftermath, there, that person is there, the ghost, and, and you just feel like, oh gosh, this person just put a stink bomb in my life. And once again, we're going to say it is going to take time. Uh, the way I put it is if you've ever had surgery, you know that in the immediate aftermath of the surgery, you're going to limp some and you're going to be sore, but you can work it through. And as you do get back to your routines and you do allow yourself to connect with people who have a decent understanding of what uh, team health is about and what it means to be a reasonable person, you can get rid of it. What you do is you allow yourself to have that limp, if you will, even as you continue to move forward. You don't want to quit on yourself. You don't want to quit on all people. Another question people will ask is, well, how do I make sense of that narcissist split personality? For example, I know that some of you can recall times when that narcissistic person was so complimentary toward you. Hey, you'll never have a good friend like me. And you're thinking, I hope not. Or it may be that you'll be thinking, uh, you know, th this person uh, was, was there for you and seemingly was uh, such a, a positive upli uh, uplifting factor. How do you make sense of that person's split personality? And this is a hard one. The answer is, it was all part of their narcissism. Narcissists are known for living behind a false self. They're very good. They're skilled, especially the coverts, at maintaining a uh, uh, an image, sometimes for a long period of time, only for you to find out they're players. They're manipulators. They're exploiters. They're users. And you have to come to terms with that ugly type of truth. Another, you can ask, well, could I have prevented this from happening? You know, those illustrations that I read and some of the circumstances you're talking about or you're dealing with, uh, it's like, well, maybe I, if I had seen it more that, or sooner, I, maybe I could have done something about it. And absolutely, you can't afford to torture yourself with that. It's about the narcissist. It's not about you. Uh, part of the problem is you, you come with decency or you don't know what you don't know. And the narcissist is thinking, I can make that work for me. They're manipulators. They're schemers. 
And uh, unfortunately, they, they did bring uh, their own wily, sly ways to the equation, but you have to make sure uh, it's simply not about you and don't let it become about you. And then another, and that is, is it okay for me to want to seek revenge or restitution? Now, my response is, well, where you can seek restitution, in other words, if there are some consequences that can be put into play or some stipulations or some uh, some sort of discussion about what went wrong, that would be good. Revenge, I mean, again, we go back to consequences. You don't want to get to the point of saying, I am going to so make their my life miserable because you don't want to become just like them. But that's, that's, that's one where you recognize my best resent, revenge is a life well lived. And I need to have a real strong sense of who I am. This is your boundaries. I want to have a definition of who I'm going to be. And if that person has really messed with me in the past, today is my new day. I define me. I'm going to determine who I'm going to be from this point moving forward. And that ghost in the room has, uh, has less and less and less influence. I, I'm going to uh, take a look at what's happened to me. I'm going to uh, ponder it very carefully. And then there's going to be this, who am I going to be from this day forward? And you want to have a, a deep commitment to your own well-being. You want to ha- learn how to have a self-trust. If you need someone, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, to help you sift it out, then by all means, go through that. But I'm hoping you can decide, based on the fact that you've been through some very difficult circumstances, the ghost of that person can revisit you from time to time. I'm hoping you can decide. The bottom line, though, in spite of all of that, is I'm a lifelong student. And right now, I'm looking forward to gaining greater wisdom. I think that would be a fair presumption for you to make. Now, if you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. More videos will be coming your way. Uh, as I mentioned a couple times there, if you have a need to sift things through with a therapist, I'm so pleased that we have a sponsor that can assist you. Uh, the people at BetterHelp.com, they have a whole team of licensed professional therapists, and, and I've been sponsored by them now for years. And if that's something you would uh, desire or need, I would strongly encourage you to go in that direction. Likewise, I've put together courses. Uh, these are online courses that you can download, and uh, and we have links to those below. Uh, and uh, uh, each course has multiple videos, written documents, and guided questions. Ready, set, connect about how to make healthy connection skills. This is me about how to establish those boundaries. Free to be, finding yourself despite the narcissist. We have my webinars. We have my uh, podcast. Our uh, uh, website, uh, survivingnarcissism.tv, has many articles. I have my books, lots of resources. I truly appreciate you letting me be on your journey with you. Okay, that narcissist can seem to be that, (laughs) that ghost that just remains in your house and won't go away. But the key for you is to know, uh, I know who I am. I have a game plan for who I'm going to be. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to do that's going to keep me in an optimistic frame of mind is I'm going to uh, anchor down on dignity and respect and civilities. And beginning with that toward myself and toward others, I'm going to become the best version of myself. That person's not going to continue to whisper in my ear symbolically. That being the case, I think it's fair to uh, uh, to say and to assume that you will indeed still be able to find your place of peace. <laughs>